Hi, my name is Brad Cunningham. Today I'm going to talk about how to do simple storyboard animations in WPF. Animations are, are one of the differentiating features of WPF over a technology like WinForms. Uh, the animation system is baked into WPF at its core level and it can give your applications a sense of life and, and feeling if you can add subtle animations. So I'm going to start with a real simple example. Animations can get Kind of complicated so let's start simple first so that we all understand it so i have a button on my form here and i've retemplated that button to be an image button uh, and and i've set a width so we'll take a look at the control template here uh, very simply the control template is targeted at buttons and i've given it a key here called image button and what i've done is i've replaced the button template so that it's just an image control as opposed to the default button uh, and I've used template bindings for the height and the width here, just so from our button element, we can set height and width and the image will change size. So we can take a look at that. If I change the width to 150, you can see that the image changes size. And if I change the height to say 50, you can see that the image again changes size. So that's because of our template bindings. Um, so when I run this application, all it is is, is a picture of the koala here. And when you click on it, nothing happens because it's it's just an image with no handlers and no click event handlers or anything like that. What I want to do is I want to add a simple event trigger to my button which will fire off an animation when we click on the button. So I'm going to grab a code snippet here rather than uh, making you watch me type all of this out. So I'm going to open up my button tag, and inside the button tag, I'm going to paste this code snippet, and I'll move this into view here so we can all see it. So what I do inside the button tag is I create a triggers tag, and in that trigger, I create what's called an event trigger. There's many different ways for you to fire or your animations. This is a simple example here of, of firing an animation when you click on a button. Now inside an event trigger, the only thing you can do uh, for event triggers is to run a storyboard. So you start by creating a begin storyboard tag. There's a couple of options. Uh, you can do a begin storyboard. You can also have a remove storyboard, resume storyboard, pause storyboard. So if you wanted to stop an animation when you click it or pause an animation when you click on the button, you could do all of those things. For this example, I want to begin a new storyboard. So I create a begin storyboard tag. And inside the storyboard tag, the begin storyboard tag, I create a storyboard object. And a storyboard can contain any number of animations. We'll get into this in future videos. Uh, for this example, what we're going to do is we're going to create a double animation. And there's various types of animations in WPF. And when you open this, you can see we've got a decimal animation, a double animation. Um, you can have uh, animations using keyframes. You'll see a bunch of different examples, uh, integer animations. And basically what, this, what the differences are is uh, based on what type of property you're animating. So when you're doing an animation in WPF, your goal is to change the value of a property on an element over time. So if we look at what this animation is doing, we're, we're setting the target property to the opacity. So opacity is the alpha channel of our element, uh, whether it's fully opaque or fully transparent and the opacity attribute on an element is a, a value between 0 and 1. So if I went up to our button and just tried to set opacity equal to 0.5, you can see that the image fades out. It's 50% opaque uh, or 50% transparent. If you set it to 2.5, it's 25% opaque. So that value, the, the value of the opacity attribute is a double. It's some fractional amount. So that's why we are doing a double animation. Because the property that we're trying to animate is a double. And so we use the double animation to change that value over time. So we need to tell the animation what the property is that we're targeting. In this case, we're targeting the opacity. And if you just have uh, a storyboard with one animation inside of it, you can actually move this target property up to the storyboard tag. And you can say this entire storyboard targets this property. Uh, makes it a little simpler to read. So then in a double animation, you've got a couple of options. You can say 
from, which means start at this value, and you can say to, which is end at this value. So typically, you want to just specify one or the other. Most cases, you're going to just specify the to value, which means animate to, and I'm saying animate the opacity property to 0.25. This means if there's any other animations applied or somebody else has modified the opacity, it's not going to start at 1 and go all the way to 0.25. And I'll show you the differences there. Uh, and then you specify a duration, which is a time span. And that's how long you want this animation to run. How long will it take to get the opacity property to a 0.25 value? And we're saying do that over one second of time. So that's a lot to take in. So let me go ahead and run this and show you what it looks like and then start tweaking some of these properties. So now when I click on it, you'll see it fades down to 0.25. And you see, I've got it coming back. I've got a property set on my storyboard called auto reverse is true. The only reason I'm doing that is so that I can show you repeatedly by clicking on it. You can see it over and over again. If I took that property off, it would stop at 0.25 and wouldn't fade back in. So let me show you those, those changes. So let's take auto reverse off and I'll go ahead and run this again. And you'll see that when I click it, it's going to go take one second and over a one second of time, it's going to fade down to 0.25. And now subsequent clicks here are not changing the opacity. The reason that that's not changing is because our storyboard says take the property to 0.25. It doesn't have a from value. So there's no starting value. It says whatever the value may be, that it starts at, go ahead and animate it to 0.25. So in our case, we've already animated this once, and we've animated this property to 25% or 0.25. So any subsequent animations that take it to that value don't go anywhere because we're already at that value. So if we were to say change this and add from 1, now what we're saying is no matter what the value is when the animation starts, start it over at 1 and fade it down to 0.25. And you'll see the behavior here. I'll run this again. You'll see what this looks like. So I'm going to click it from 1 to 0.25. That looks normal. But now I'm at 0.25. So when I click it again, what's going to happen is my animation is going to run. And it's going to start at 1 and go down to 0.25. So you can see it snaps right back to 1 and then fades down to 0.25. And that's the difference between specifying a from or a to value. Oftentimes, you only want to specify the to value. And the reason for that is if somebody's already animated the property, you don't want this snap behavior. You can see it snaps right back to fully opaque and then, and then fades back down. And it's kind of a, a, a jarring behavior. So often, you'll just specify the to value. And that's why I added auto reverse here, just so I can show you over and over again. And what auto reverse does is it takes the value from 0.25 and runs it back to the starting value. So it just runs the, the storyboard in reverse. Over the same amount of time, one second, it's going to take it from 0.25 back to 1. And that's why it goes down and comes back up. And all of that happens over one second of time. And let's say we want this to take not one second, but maybe half a second. We just modify the time span. And now when we click it, it's much faster. You can see it takes half as long to get to those, to that value. OK, so that's a very simple example in WPF of how to apply an animation to an element.